Now we come to talk about jinn possession. I guess the easiest way to explain this to you is we're talking about a voluntary act by one of the jinn. We're not talking about the jinn being commissioned by somebody to attack someone. We're not talking about the jinn being forced to attack somebody. We are talking about a jinni voluntarily of his or her own accord attacking a person. And there are many, many proofs of this. And again, one of the most common things that I hear is people who say there's no evidence that the jinn possess people. And that all of this is mental illness and so on and so forth. I say to him, no problem. Do you believe in the jinn? They say, yes, we believe in the jinn. Because you know the jinn are mentioned in the Quran, yes. And you believe that the jinn are a type of creation, yes. And you believe that the jinn are intelligent, yes. And you believe that the jinn uh, have had interaction with human beings and this interaction has led them both to transgression and tyranny, yes. Why don't you believe the jinn possess people? The answer will come back and there is no other answer. The only answer will come back is that my mind cannot comprehend it. Either they'll say, I don't believe in the jinn at all, in which case they have left Islam if they have been proven to them that they understand the jinn are mentioned in the Quran and they are, their doubts are cleared on that issue and they continue to say there are no such thing as the jinn, then they don't, they've, they've disbelieved in the Quran. But there are many people who say, we believe in the jinn, but we don't believe the jinn possess people. And we say, what is your evidence? Just say the only thing they have after everything is, it doesn't make sense to me. And that's not an evidence in Islam. Rather, if we look at some of the evidence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who devour riba will not stand on the day of resurrection, except like the standing of a person who is touched by the shaitan, possessed by the shaitan, leading him to insanity. And the word mess here is the word used for jinn possession. They are possessed by the shaitan, leading them into insanity. The Prophet ﷺ said, the shaitan flows through the son of Adam as his blood flows. And in a number of ahadith, the Prophet ﷺ removed the jinn from the bodies of people. And he would come to a person and strike him on his chest or on his back and say, leave O enemy of Allah and I am the messenger of Allah. Furthermore, it's not just the Quran, and the sunnah and the consensus of the Muslims, but the eyes and the ears and the senses, you see it every single day in a way that can't be explained by mental illness. And we'll talk about this probably a little bit more tomorrow. When might a person be vulnerable to jinn possession? A person perhaps might be at their most vulnerable to jinn possession at times when they forget Allah. And there are a number of evidences for this. The first is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَنْ يَعِشْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ نُقَيِّضْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينٌ Whoever turns away and lives without the remembrance of Allah, we assign for them a shaitan that will accompany them. So this tells us what? That when you're far away from the remembrance of Allah, you are vulnerable to being afflicted by the shaitan. There is another, perhaps even clearer evidence. And that is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِّنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْصِرُونَ Those people who are obedient to Allah when they are afflicted by something from the shaitan, a touch or a whisper, they remember Allah and then they can see clearly. So the remembrance of Allah pushes away the shaitan and not remembering Allah draws the shaitan near to you. We also have an evidence from the sunnah that a person is vulnerable in places that are particularly unclean or isolated. When you go to a new place, you say, min ma khalaq. I seek refuge with the perfect words of Allah from the evil that He has created, and no evil will touch you in that place. So you're in somewhere that's particularly isolated and deserted, or you end up in a new place, you drive into a new city, you climb out of your car, you say these words, nothing will afflict you. Reasons why possession occurs. Now I'm talking, why would the jinn possess somebody without being commanded or contracted to do so by a magician. The first is in order to further 
the aims of the shaitan. So for example, a person already has magic done to them. At this point, we've seen many cases where there are jinn that will join in and possess the person on top of the jinn that was sent by the magician. And they are simply there to help support and further the aims of the shaitan. So jinn possession that is there to further the aims of the shaitan. Secondly, if a person has harmed the jinn or their family, and again, we see this many, many times, not so much in these days, but you did see it a lot when people would uh, spend more time in the areas that are known to be inhabited by the jinn, and they would go out you know, into the, the countryside and into the desert for long periods of time. And often they would live there. And sometimes they would do things that were un-Islamic that would lead them to harming the jinn. They may harm some of their children or harm some of them by pouring boiling oil on them, pouring boiling water on them. You know, if you're out, you know, people used to do this when they, there wasn't a good drainage system is people would pour things out, you know, go out in the garden and pour boiling oil, you know, out in the garden or pour, pour boiling water out of the window and things like this. People have been possessed by these things if they've afflicted the jinn. And I think there's an overwhelming body of evidence that the jinn can be harmed by some of the things that harm human beings. We now come on to the topic of common signs of jinn possession. There are many, many signs of jinn possession. And the most important thing to emphasize to you in this regard is that they are shared with many other illnesses and problems. And so there is no guarantee that everyone who displays these symptoms is possessed by a jinn. I'll give you a simple example that everyone can understand. You come to the doctor, your local GP, and you say to him that I have a headache. You might need glasses, you might not have slept the night before, you might have a brain tumor, could be anything from the most insignificant thing to the most severe thing. And he will diagnose you according to other symptoms that you have, ask you about other things and come to a conclusion about what is actually wrong. Likewise, it would be a huge mistake for somebody to take these signs of jinn possession and to guarantee that everyone who displays them has a problem with the jinn. From the common signs of possession are sudden rapid changes in personality, personality disorders, and split personality. Many times the Quran talks about insanity in a completely different context to the jinn. So this affirms that there are medical disorders that affect a person's mental state. However, it would also be a huge mistake to discount the role of the jinn in medical psychiatric disorders. Many people have psychiatric problems, many of them are afflicted by the jinn. And many of them, subhanAllah, we have recited upon and they have got better in a way that could not be conceived by modern medicine. I.e. the psychiatrist says to them, there is no cure for what you have. I can only suppress the symptoms. And you treat them with the Quran for a week and they're cured and they no longer need their medication. Also from the symptoms, are a change in facial structure or voice. And you really have to see this to appreciate it. When a person's entire face and entire voice completely twists and changes. In fact, you may hear a woman talking in the voice of a man, man talking in the voice of a woman or the voice of a child, um, a complete twist of the face so that you no longer can see the person in, in the way that they normally are. It looks like a totally different person. Sudden displays of extreme emotion, often at inappropriate times, like laughing when everyone is crying, crying when everyone is laughing. Complaints of crawling ants, you know, like feeling like ants crawling up and down the body, heat in the body, uh, something in the throat or in the stomach, a sudden change in ability, such as being able to speak another language without any experience. Severe and repeating nightmares, sleep problems like sleep paralysis, feeling like something is holding you down, sleepwalking, uh, hallucinations, and I've experienced a jinn hallucination. It's not very nice. I woke up in India with a rather large needle driven through my forearm. And um, anyway, it was under the skin. And I woke up, I switched my phone off, I sat up, it was quite clearly in my arm. And I began to pull it out of my arm. And as I was pulling it out of my arm, it was about as thick as a biro pen. 
and I was pulling it out of my arm, the blood was appearing on the wall of the hotel room. Like I'm looking at my arm and there's no blood. I'm looking at the hotel wall and there's blood on the wall. And I'm thinking, that's weird. <laughs> and then I look and uh, I, I said, I don't remember, I said, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan or whatever I said, and I you know, shook my head and it's gone. No wound, no pain. And it was very painful pulling it out. There was no wound, no pain, no blood on the wall, nothing. So hallucinations, uh, definitely. Particularly people um, see clouds, see figures, things like that. Liking to be in places associated with the jinn. Like liking to be in places of filth, liking to be in places of isolation. Extreme increased physical strength. So I'll give you an example. We had a, a rather interesting case in Sunderland. I didn't deal with this one personally, but it was very interesting. And this was that we had a case of some police being called to a house and running away. And that's not normal, but they saw something that literally terrified them. And they called one of the brothers uh, who was previously a paranormal investigator. And there's basically this old lady and she has literally flipped a big wooden bed completely upside down. She's flipped all of her furniture completely upside down. The big sofa that two men take to carry, she's just flicked it upside down. And she sat there, you know, sort of on her own, surrounded by this entire mess in the house. And I believe they actually saw her flipping the furniture over. Um, that is an example of extreme increased physical strength that you wouldn't expect to see from somebody um, of that regard.